Welcome to the Pop on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is. I am the Pope in question. My name is May Lynn. I am a trans Episcopalian Woodite and part time Pope, which is a title I came up with about an hour ago that sounds just as ridiculous as my continued existence. Welcome to episode 449 of the podcast, which means technically, uh, if you know anything about math, that we have done 448 episodes before this one. Don't bother checking our math on that. Why would we lie? That would be a bizarre thing to make a reoccurring bit on the show. Very excited about today. We're going to be talking about movies. I've got a list. Uh, a very different historical approximations. We'll be talking a bit about some more recent history. And this week's movie... I will be reviewing two movies at the same time in part three when we get to this week's movie. The little-known 1988 film Flesh-Eating Mothers. Yes. A great film. You know, Nelson Mandela wrote Flesh-Eating Mothers in prison. Yes, he did. Uh, amazing person, amazing leader. Uh, so, yeah, let's get to it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Bunny, I'm not calling you Jack. Okay, I heard okay. that. Okay, it's just that as you may recall, we decided five episodes ago five episodes ago, back in episode four forty four, that our randomly occurring potpourri of little bits in the monologue should be called Jeff. Now personally, I thought and still think that this segment should be called the Betty White Memorial Pod monologue segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends download today. But Jeff was chosen, and so Jeff it is. So here's a bit of tiny stuff I came up with over the past three weeks. Let's Jeff this dang thing up to 11. All right. Uh, culture war BS. Culture war BS. The far right, they don't have that much in terms of policy. But what they are really good at is getting... Republicans and the far right and conservative Christians angry enough that they vote against their own best interests. And so uh, they always are fighting these culture war things that the majority of Americans don't actually care about. Most Americans want uh, safe access to abortion and most Americans want uh, trans people to be able to live their lives, but uh, here, here are Democrats working on or, issues. Or, or here some are people just want fucking publicity. Yeah, and then here are Republicans saying that, like, uh, okay, now that we've been elected into office, let's work on the issues that affect people. Hunter Biden's dick pics. Like, how does that help normal people? That's just culture war BS. And and it, it, the. the the GOP and the Republicans are trying, uh, are are tearing themselves apart, and they're yes. fighting each other. And there's like, you know, like uh, Mitt Romney is trying to be like a normal, and then here's all these wackadoos, you know, yelling and screaming and uh, booing during a State of the Union. And and I just think to myself, okay, we let you know, just like uh. Just like uh, Godzilla, just like uh, that first American Godzilla remake, the legendary pictures one. Yeah. Let them fight. That, that's what I think of. Ken Watanabe, every time I see the Republicans in fighting, let them fight. Yes. Because, it, it, hey, uh, us liberals are in a good position. Because the Republicans are just ripping each other apart, and Trump is probably going to end up making his own party, which will split the Republicans, the conservative vote in half. And so, hey, Democrats, we're in a good spot. All you have to do is just be normal. Okay? Just be normal people. Yes. For just a little bit. And the Democrats will be fine. And then I see an article about Laguna Beach enacting a ban on balloons. Yes. You can't buy balloons in Laguna Beach. 
WTF, liberals. It's like you take it's like, OK, so here's the here's the the Democratic Party and they're standing here and they go, we are going to take one dramatic step forward. Oh, no. Have we alienated people? We want to be centrist. We don't want to upset people just to be safe. Let's take two steps backwards. And that's the Democratic Party. Yes. And it's just. All you Dems have to do is just be normal and not go off on your BS. And and banning balloons isn't going to do anything for anyone. OK, you're that's that's just the sort of idiotic nonsense that the Republicans like Democrats aren't Democrats aren't coming for your gas stoves. Democrats aren't. Remember when uh, Joe Biden was banning all hamburgers and now you can't find hamburgers anywhere? Yeah. But, like, a balloon ban, really? You're making liberals sound as stupid as Democrats think liberals are with your balloon ban. But whatever. Uh, I have well, a great it's, idea. It's for a politician to get themselves in the news. Yeah. You know, basically, so yeah. sales are down on roll doll books. Let's edit them and we yeah. will get in the news. Yeah. Or that jackhole from friends who just popped up saying some shit and Pamela yeah. Anderson. Well, Pamela let's Anderson. get relevant again. Let's get the cameras on us. It doesn't yep. matter how ridiculous what we're saying is. Yeah. We it's will ridiculous. be talked about again. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about just grabbing a headline or two. Bunny! Yes? Two weeks ago, I was on my computer. Well, now three weeks. Three weeks ago, I was on my computer. <laughs> and... um. I saw one of those clickbaity news articles. I use Google Chrome for my web browsing, and I only use it because there's a built-in game called Surf that I'm really addicted to. So you have stopped binging? Oh, no, I still bing things. Okay. But I use Google Chrome as my uh, web browser. So you bing things through Google Chrome? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of pervert are you? One of a kind, baby. <laughs> like an onion. Onions have layers. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I'm on Google Chrome, and Google Chrome does this thing where it's like, okay, I, I open up Google Chrome, and here's like this bar of like, here's like the top eight websites that you go to. You can click on your email. You can click on Twitter. You can click on YouTube. You can click on Facebook. You can click on, I don't know, rawstory.com. And then on the bottom is just this massive hodgepodge, a plethora of uh, various clickbaity articles that they're trying to get me to click on. Yes. I, I saw one of these clickbaity news articles, but it's not news. It's just a listicle, you know? And, and for a while, for a while, all of the clickbaity articles on the bottom of my web browser were just... Uh, Homeowners in Oklahoma, if you make under this much money, you can qualify for a grant. And it's like, I don't care. Yes. Biden has messed up with this gaffe. No, I don't want to hear from Fox News. Eventually, doing that enough, the articles on my web browser started getting good at knowing what I might want to click on. So it got to the point where it's like, oh, I'm not going to click on this stupid article. I'm not going to click on this stupid article. Ooh, what is this? A science fiction film that bombed in the 90s is suddenly doing wonderful numbers on Netflix? Nope, I'm not clicking you. I want to click you, but yes. I'm not clicking you. This is just clickbait. You won't believe what fans have to say about this once beloved Marvel movie. It, oh, you, you're so close to getting me. Click baby headlines. Yes. You're getting better. So so I, I I get on my browser and I see one of these clickbaity news articles and it's a listicle. And here's the headline. Ten unfilmable books they should make after Dune. I did not click on that article, but and I've I seen love, it. 
And I loved that headline because, yeah, everyone knows that be that before effeminate 101 pound American Amelie, Mr. Timothy Sha Omelet made Dune and the upcoming sequel, Dune 2 Still Duning, everyone wondered, man, if only one day someone could make a movie about Dune. But that'll never happen. Yeah. Oh, man, can you imagine someone making a, 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 a big-budget Hollywood Dune film? Man, that'll never occur because that book is unfilmable. Like, how dare you sully the hard work of Sting, uh, Kyle McCluckin, and the band Toto? How dare you, sir or yep. madam? How dare you? What other books are unfilmable that you would like to see one day get turned into a movie? And I'm sorry, it was still better than this one. I have a few movies that I hope unfilmable books that I hope they make after Dune. Number one, American Psycho. Yeah. That, wouldn't it be crazy if they made a movie about that? Man, but they never will. That book is unfilmable, like Dune. Yes. Or Fight Club, or what about... Now, this is crazy. I'm not talking about an animated movie, but what if they did a live-action Lord of the Rings? Can you believe that? No, you couldn't. Not do that. that animated crap. No, like, like, uh, it would have which to we be all like, oh, is the it, only it Lord would, of the Rings that has ever been made because Tolkien is unfilmable. Yeah. It would have to be like three movies or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be crazy. Yeah. You know, you know what I thought was an unfilmable book for the longest time? Uh, it's really long and it's crazy. What is it called? Oh, yeah, The Bible. Yeah. I thought. That thing's unfilmable, but a, you know who I think did it really well? Marvin Handelman and Clive Walton. They did an amazing job with their 1993 film, And God Spoke. Man, what a cast. Andy Dick, Lou Ferrigno, Eve Plum, Soupy Sales as Moses. His beautiful scene with the six-pack just blew me away. I was yeah. so close to God. Seeing that movie. Oh, and who can forget newcomer R.C. Bates as God, too. A incredible film. I can't recommend And God Spoke Enough. I also heard there's a making of, but I haven't bothered to see it. <laughs> uh, Bunny. Yes. I got a great idea that came to me uh, a few nights ago. I was really high. But a great idea. A great way to impress the ladies. Or the gentlemen's, you know, or the uh, gender rebellious out there. It, it, I've got a great idea. So this is what you do. You go to the store uh, that sells furniture, the furniture store, and yeah. you buy a really comfy couch. OK, you get that couch, you bring it home and you strip it. You strip it of all the fabric, if it's leather or if it's pleather, whatever, you strip it. And then you replace the cover of the couch with you go to like a Michael's or a Joanne's Fabrics, you get some Lightning McQueen Cars fabric and you reupholster the couch. And you know what you got now? What do you got? You got a couch. A that is a great idea. I also still need about $1,500 to buy a thing I found on Walmart.com called a couch, C-O-W-C-H, and it's a giant plastic cow couch. I need it. <laughs> I need a couch. Uh, Bunny, speaking of impressing the opposite sex or the same sex, I have been workshopping some new pickup lines. Okay. Okay. I... I'm really, every one of these is freaking gold. Okay? Okay. Each one of these is so good that uh, your, your minds are going to be blown. Okay, so here are some of my new pickup lines, okay? Damn, girl. Did it hurt? 
when you fell from heaven because your body is covered in a million eyes and uh, you have a sword that's on fire. Because that's what that's bi- that's it. a what a biblically that, accurate angel would look like. All all across America, as this premieres on YouTube's, panties fucking dropping right there. Exactly, exactly. I'm like I'm like the Tom Jones of stoned trans Mexican women. Yes. Uh, so I told that one to Maxwell. Uh, my 11 year old and then Maxwell wrote one for me okay and so Maxwell has a pickup line in this list and it goes like this uh, did it hurt when you fell from heaven because you must be an angel also I'm allergic to wings my uh, to feathers my eyes are burning where's my EpiPen Bunny I need you to stick me Stick me, bunny! Stick me! I added the loud stick me part at the end, but Maxwell wrote that one, and that one's great. Yes. Yeah, okay. Here's another one. Uh, Wow, baby. Someone should call the cops because it should be illegal to look that good. But seriously, do not call the cops. I am brown. They will just shoot me. Yes. They will just shoot me. And not release the body cam footage. Oh, wait, they turned off their camera. Oh. There was a malfunction. Okay, here's another one. I really like this one. This one's more of a concept. Uh, Hey, baby. Are you a banana? Because you look very appealing. Then you rip off all of her clothes and throw her on the floor, and then you slip on her. <laughs> you slip on the clothes. You, no, you see, yeah, you slip on the clothes. Yeah. And then you, then uh, if she doesn't want to be with you, you could probably just sue her. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, you know, that's that one's sort of double sided. Hey, baby, are we in a museum? Because you look like a work of art. Specifically, Picasso. You have both ears on one side of your face. (laughs) And I have never seen that before. No. So, that's odd. This one I really like. This one I really like. (laughs) Hey, baby. I seem to have lost my number. And my address. I miss my mom. I need an adult. Can you find my mom? Her name's just Mommy. (laughs) No, I don't have a dad. I have an Uncle Ron. (laughs) Hey, baby. Do you know CPR? Because you're taking my breath away. Not that hard, though. I do have asthma. (laughs) <laughs> so you know don't get all full of yourself about that one hey baby are you an alien because you look out of this world also a lot of tentacles on you yeah a lot of tentacles Eleanor just came in and sat down and heard that last one and her mouth was agape really Yes. Yeah. That's good. Uh, uh, he, this one I like. This one I like a lot. Hey, baby, if you were a transformer, you would be Optimus Fine. Ooh. No, wait. What's the name of that annoying one? Oh, yeah. Bumblebee. You're Bumblebee. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, okay. Uh, here's another one. Uh, hey, baby, is there an airport nearby or is that just my heart taking off? Also, I smell burnt toast and I taste pennies. Yep, it's a heart attack again. (laughs) It's not you. It's not you. But do you have a wallet? 
because I need you to put it in my mouth. <laughs> I might bite my own tongue off. Hey, baby. If you were a vegetable, you would be a cucumber. Oh. And oh, crap. I'm allergic to cucumbers. Get me my EpiPen. I need you to stick me. That was a that was a that was a that was a follow up. Hey, a callback. The EpiPen, yeah, it was a callback. The EpiPen is still in play. Uh wow. Nice outfit. It would look better on my floor. Because I would look so much better in that dress. Come on, girl. You don't have the body for that. I do. Okay. That one's that one's kind of for me. Yeah. Not that one doesn't apply to everyone. Uh hey girl. Are you a buffet? Because you look tasty enough to eat. Not in an Arnie Hammer way. To be clear. That always I does have not, to be specified now. I am not a cannibal. Uh, hey, baby, are you Quentin Tarantino? Because you look problematic. And then you take off your shoes and you just shove your feet in her face. <laughs> that, one's, that one's another concept one. I have one final one, one final pickup line, but it's bad. Ten minute warning. Okay. I have one more, but it's really bad. My wife said it was problematic. So are you ready for this one, Bunny? Go for it. Okay. Hey, baby. Are you the Catholic Church? Because I'm an eight-year-old boy. <laughs> oh. And those are my uh, new pickup lines. Feel free to use them, everybody. Uh -huh. They were all pretty great. They were they they were all pretty great. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The panties are dropping, and also the boxer shorts. True. Yeah. And also the snake skins. Not sure why. We've got the scientists working on it. Yes, to find out as why. they must. Now, before we go, uh, we got about nine minutes left. Uh, there are some movies. I want to talk about some movies I've seen over the past couple of weeks. I'm going back to the movies. Plus, we're in January slash February, which is a wonderful time to go see movies because that's when the studio throws all of the things that they know will not be successful any other time of the year. So you get some really weird stuff. Yeah. Um, knock at the Cabin, an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Uh, it, it's it's actually not an original script of his. It's based on a novel called uh, The Cabin at the End of the World, I think is what it's called. But a uh, pretty good movie. I never thought I'd say this, but um, Batista is the world's greatest professional wrestling actor. Okay. Better than The Rock, better than John Cena, although he was really good in The Suicide Squad. It's, everyone's better than Hulk Hogan. It, Batista is amazing. He's a professional wrestler turned actor who can actually freaking act, and he is amazing, and he carries the whole film. The movie itself was okay, but uh, the twist was kind of silly, but it, it's fun. It, it might not be something you rush out and see, but if it's available to you and you have nothing to do for two hours, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Okay. Uh, Ant Man Three: The Dark World. I thought it was fine. Yeah, a lot of people out there hate it, but this is the reason why I liked it. I grew up with the comic books. I grew up reading like old Tales to Astonish and What If comic books from like the sixties and seventies, and so this just felt like one of those one-off. Tales to Astonish, strange, like, 1960s comics. And it was weird, and there were, you know, strange aliens and strange creatures and, and a bad yeah. guy they got to defeat. I thought it was cute. And I'm not just saying that because the foreign guy from the car 
skit in season one of I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson is in the movie twice. This has <laughs> nothing to do with I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. I'm interested in having you see it funny because they do MODOK in a very different way. Uh, every picture I've seen of MODOK I fucking hate. Yeah, uh, the special effects don't look that great, but I thought story-wise it was alright. It was pretty good. It It wasn't as bad as what people say. I also saw a British I'm, I'm animated... Just, I'm just tired of being disappointed. They've got me a few fucking times now. It was interesting to see Bill Murray in it. He's He was basically just uh, Bunny Brackenridge, but in space. Yeah. He was Space Bunny from Ed Wood, which was, which was weird. And uh, one thing that really upset me, there was no Luis. No, I heard that too. Michael Pena, he was not in this, and it really upset me, because I love him. Despite the fact that the actor Michael Pena is a Scientologist, which really upsets me, I love that Mexican dude in all the, in all the Ant-Man movies, and I was really upset that he wasn't in this. Um, also, a large portion of the... Of I, I have three... been wanting to see, like, the sidekick movie. Yeah. You know, you, I've you wanted get, to uh, see Louis Pena, Michael... Kat yeah. Denning, you know, uh Um Um Kate Katie? Katie? From oh, uh, oh, Shang Chi. Beyond the Doubt. Yeah. Aquafina. Yeah. Aquafina, Agent Wu. Yeah, you get all of Ned. that. Yeah. That would be great. I would love to see that. I also saw a British animated movie called The Amazing Maurice. I absolutely loved it. It is um, in the Discworld series of Terry Pratchett's. Um, I'm, I'm really love. I've loved Terry Pratchett for a very long time. For I, I'd say about 20 years, 20 plus years, I've been into Terry Pratchett and his Discworld series. And... Um, He's been getting a lot of press online. A lot of people are saying, stop fanboying and fangirling up for Harry Potter. That's problematic. Harry Pratchett. That's what you read instead. There are so many more books. They're wonderful. They're not problematic. Harry Pratchett's amazing. I'll be talking about it later during Historic Approximations, but it's a kid's movie set in the Discworld universe, and it's, it's really good. There's a uh, unseen university and you see rinse win once or twice. And you, it, I really liked it. It was a really exciting movie and uh, it was cute. It was only in theaters for like a small heartbeat. It was like a made for TV movie in England that they decided to put in theaters here in America. And I believe it's already gone, but great, adorable film. If you see it like to stream or to download somewhere, you should get it. Cause it's, it, it's, it's a cute, cute film. Uh, and there's a fourth movie that I have seen recently that I am saving for part three. There are three parts to the podcast. Number one is our monologue, which is almost done here. And then there's historic approximations where we talk about history. And then in part three is when we finally get to this week's movie, the 1988 film Flesh Eating Mothers, based on the um, uh, William Shakespeare play of the same name. Uh I will be reviewing two movies in part three because I, in many ways they're basically the same film and I'm really excited to get to that. But uh, So stick around. Spoiler alert, it's Cocaine Bear. <laughs> so, you know, one of those movies where it's like, oh, what is this movie about? It's in the title. Yes. It's in the title. It's just, it's right there. You yeah. read the title, you already know the entire film. Just sit down, eat some popcorn, smoke a joint, have fun. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. So, Ray Liotta's the bad guy in Cocaine Bear. Yes, he is. And that shocked me to see him in this, because he's been dead for a New York minute. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, he's been dead for a while. change. He's been dead for a while. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to save that for part three. So anyway, that's it for Jeff this week. I thought that was pretty good. And my list of pickup lines, those were, those were golden. Phenomenal. We're, Thank we're gonna, you. I was on I was, my way. 
I was yeah. like going. I was so proud of that. Those are all so good. So uh, that's it for the monologue this week. We are going to be taking a short break because we record this on Zoom. So uh, we have uh, time limits. So we are going to be taking a short break, and we will be right back with historic approximations. This week, we're doing something different. We're going to be talking about a lot of celebrities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine celebrities. Every once in a while, a celebrity will do a horrible thing, but for whatever reason, they'll still, they won't get canceled and will still be allowed to exist amongst us normal people. Cough, cough, Mel Gibson. And so um, this is just a friendly reminder to everyone of like, uh, yeah, John Cleese isn't the best. Sean Penn did horrible things. Matt Damon has some issues, but we will be getting to that. So stick around. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Film after this short break. Do 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 do. This, this, this is the 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 swinging uh music to transition. Do 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 do. Scooty pop a doo wow and break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 